of Law. I'm also on the faculty there. And we're excited to be here today and talk to you about a couple of our um, programs that we have. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to my colleagues in the audience, Kate Cruz and Denise Roy. While they're not up here, they were really instrumental in the work that we're going to talk about today. One of our key priorities at Mitchell Hamlin this year is to rethink our career and professional development process and how do we kind of work with students on that issue and specifically to take that process and tie it to the academic curriculum and help students understand from the get-go in year one why that's a really critical piece of their education. We want students to come away with an understanding that their education is holistic and it includes what happens in the classroom and what they do inside of our building in terms of competitions or student orgs, but it also includes what they need to be doing outside in their own legal communities in terms of building professional connections and creating that community for themselves. We're really fortunate at Mitchell Hamlin to have a really diverse student body in terms of the students that have a great professional depth of experience that they already come with. And this has been a really interesting learning process, I think, for us because as much as we're leading them in this process, we've received a lot of guidance from our students who already come with that background. For, for us, this is sort of the next big thing. This is the next step beyond the sort of theory and, and practical experience combined together. It's working with our students to help them understand that it's important to think about what kind of lawyer you want to be and then build connections to the community and tie that to the classroom where they see a lot of value in what their faculty are talking about in their courses. It's also raised a really interesting conversation among all of us about how we work together and how faculty and career and professional development should come together as a team in many of these initiatives and, and has been really good for us in terms of re-identifying roles and, and things in that regard. The first prior Project I want to tell you about are our pathways, and this is a tool that is available to our students right now. Um, the, the pathways are academic pathways that give our students uh, access to the courses that um, in a particular substantive area. The new change that we're making this year is that we're adding at the bottom of the pathways professional growth opportunities or development opportunities, things they should think about. The pathways exist in a number of different substantive areas, which you can see on the left there, and we're also looking at developing pathways that are more about sort of the practice environment that somebody wants to be in, whether it's solo, small, or they want to pursue a career in government. The pathways include courses that the faculty who are experts in this area have designated as the, the key courses that students should be concerned with. And they're classified as core courses recommended or other courses to consider. And they're also sequenced for the students so that they can make good choices in terms of their planning. Uh, new this year in, in, uh, in the pathways that we're implementing, students will also have the ability to not just use this as a reference tool or a planning tool, but they were also, will also have the ability to use it as a tracking tool to sort of see their progress. What have I taken? What do I still need to take? And to search courses based on whether they're skills courses or um, statutory courses and the like. They also, at the top of our pathways, can access the required courses that they took in their first and their second years and understand how those courses provide a foundation for the particular pathway that they're in. The pathway that we're looking at here is the tax law pathway. If a student clicks on a particular course, they can see the course description, they can see the number of credits, when it's typically offered. And so this tool provides a really good resource in terms of planning for the student, but also as a good tool in terms of um, the registration process and, and course selection. As I mentioned before, the, the big change to this for this year that we're um, working on implementing is the addition of these professional growth or professional development opportunities. And this is more than just a sort of a basic list of you need to find a mentor, you need to do an informational interview. These are development opportunities that are geared specifically towards their pathway. So on the tax side of it, there are the tax MSBA section, a tax moot court. We're also looking at developing a dashboard that some of our other colleagues have talked about as a next step for helping students from the reporting side of it. The second project that I want to tell you about um, is related to our, um, our hybrid program, and I want to just sort of give you a little bit of information about what our, our hybrid program is. We have an enrollment option for our students uh, that live all around the country where they are um, part online and part in person, and it's 50% of each. And so students come to campus for one or two intensive weeks, and, um, and then they do the rest of their coursework online. Students in that program, in the first cohort of that program, will be starting externships in their home market starting in January of 2017. And it's our job to help them find externships in their home markets, which are very far away in many cases from St. Paul, Minnesota, where we are. So you can imagine 
the challenge that that presents in terms of identifying the appropriate uh, placements and with students that have such diverse interests. So from a, from a um, sort of coordination standpoint, it's really been an interesting process to kind of work through with career and professional development and with our faculty to think about a new way of finding these externships for these students um, and to work with them and provide them one-on-one -on -one counseling to help them identify what they want to do and to also think about in the course sequencing up to their externship what, what kinds of things they want to do. So the professional responsibility course this, that they're taking this semester is encouraging them to think about a, a self-reflection about what it is that they'd like to do as a lawyer and to do an informational interview with an attorney and, and help them start thinking about that. Um, at the end of this process, the students will do their externships in the spring, and we're continuing to work together to help close the loop with those placements. We have these hybrid students in all of these markets, and many of them need externships now, but a couple of years from now, they're going to need jobs, and we have uh, additional students coming in this program that will also need externships. And so we're really thinking about this in a different way as to how we work together to uh, from the faculty side of it, supervise the externship placement and, um, and then work together on the career development side to help develop a pipeline for uh, future employment for our students. So, thank you.